This is Block 7, The Greatest Generation, Section 2, The Rise of the Dictators, with the section beginning, Polish Independence. Let's go back to the other map first, actually. If you notice, Poland, which had reappeared after World War I, has this funky little neck over here, this corridor to the sea, that Poland doesn't touch the ocean except in that one place. The city of Danzig is there. This is known as the Polish Corridor. And as you see, the Polish Corridor divides Germany into two pieces, Germany and East Prussia, which is kind of the old traditional heartland of Germany. Well, as you can probably imagine, Hitler did not much like this. Here again is that little Polish corridor with the city of Danzig. Um, Hitler starts saying, hey, 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 hey. The people in that corridor, they're Germans. They want to live in Germany. And Poland says, well, you can't have that. It's our only access to the sea. It's the only way we trade with the rest of the world. Can't have it. Germany is threatening Poland now with war unless it gives up the corridor and the city of Danzig. Britain and France are now desperate. They are desperate to stop Hitler at this point. They make a promise to Poland. Now, Poland is a large country, has a lot of divisions, has a big army. Britain and France make an alliance with Poland. Britain and France guarantee Poland its independence. And all that means is the policy has switched. If Hitler dares attack Poland, the British and the French promise to come in on Poland's side. It is the guarantee of Polish independence from the British and the French in the summer of 1939. The next thing that the British and the French try to do is try to work with Stalin here in the Soviet Union. They understand one thing very well. They understand that Hitler will not attack Poland if Stalin is against it. Hitler is not ready to fight the Soviet Union. That if Hitler doesn't know what the Soviet Union is doing, that he can't move. The Western democracies, Britain and France, send diplomats and ambassadors to Moscow, to the Soviet Union, to try to get Stalin in on their side. Stalin listens. He's afraid of Hitler just as much as anybody else is. But Stalin does not like Britain and does not like France um, and does not like Germany. And in August of 1939, the world is shocked, stunned, like full black headlines in the New York Times, like this big letters across the top of the New York Times. The last week of August in 1939, Hitler and Stalin signed a non-aggression pact. Hitler and Stalin promised not to ever go to war with each other. What that did was it left Poland to its fate. That if the Soviet Union would not help defend Poland against Germany, Poland was sitting there by itself. With the British and the French guarantee, but how is Britain and France going to get troops over here to Poland? With his Eastern Front secure, Hitler is free to move. Not only is Hitler free to move uh, with his non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union actually agrees to invade Poland itself. That Hitler and Stalin will divide Poland up, Hitler will get the Western two-thirds, Stalin will get the Eastern two-thirds. And the last week of August, 1939, um, this non-aggression pact, the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact, the uh, Ribbentrop, Molotov, sometimes you'll see it after the foreign minister's uh, non-aggression pact, is signed, and now Hitler can attack Poland without fear from the Soviet Union. Okay? And after he attacks Poland, he can turn his attention to the Western democracies without the fear of the Soviet Union. The last peace is in place, and Hitler gives his generals the orders to invade Poland. 